think George Southern got away with a clip back, back there, a little block in the back. If you just happen to join us, uh, we are here at Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia, where with just over six minutes remaining here in the first quarter, Warren Pepper, Walt Nadzak, Jack Douglas here bringing you this game this afternoon. Southern Conference encounter between Georgia Southern and East Tennessee. The Eagles here with nine points already on the board, courtesy of a 52-yard run and a safety. And here we are with first and 10 at the 27 for Southern as Jermaine Austin, the fullback, takes it up for a little game. George Southern's using that strong formation a lot so far early in this first quarter. I, I think they're trying to get the defense to shift now and then come back the other way. You look at, uh, if, if you're 5'8", five, 5'9", five, in that's, this program, you might be a running back. Well, listen, none of their running backs can ride the roller coaster at the county fair because they're not tall enough. I see. <laughs> so. Second and five, ball now at the 32. He actually got more on that last carry than I even had any idea from up here he did. Oh Williams goodness. keeping this time around the left side, picks up the first down and maybe a couple of more. Got to play assignment football on that, and, and East Tennessee is not doing that right now. They're looking into the backfield. They're going for the cheap fake inside. Here's another look at Williams, and if you've just Coming joined us, folks, side. he is... Everybody's caught inside. A handful. Great, a great gap there to run in. Already, Williams with 27 yards on the day uh, with six rushes, and he's averaging over 100 per game. First and 10, ball to 43. Williams back to pass, looking now outside, throws across the middle, incomplete, near the 47-yard line. Pass intended for Eric Irby. Well, East Tennessee's, just, East Tennessee's looking to stop the bomb here, and then this is the pass that he completed twice last week for touchdowns against the Citadel. The same pass play, the same thing, except uh, East Tennessee's back stayed home. Georgia Southern throws the ball sparingly. However, they are productive when they do. And you, know, you have to reason that a lot of that has to do with people have to play so far up to try to stop the different options that they throw at you offensively. Well, Warren, if you'd look up there, the cushion they gave that wide receiver was 10 yards out there to the right. And they're setting, they're setting him up for, for the pitch out there. Jermaine Austin with another little uh, dive up the middle there. And they give you just enough of that and then break you outside, and then every once in a while sprinkle in a pass. I mean, <laughs> this is a defensive coordinator's nightmare yeah. trying to stop some of this. It's repetition, repetition, until the defense makes a mistake. 39, ball, that's a 44. Williams still with it. Huge hole there, and he gets up, not to the first down marker, but just a yard or so short, as Williams again now with more than 30 yards on the day rushing. Got a linebacker coming on a blitzer, you can see on the replay, ran right by it. I mean, he ran right by the quarterback inside. Somebody's got assignment on that quarterback, and they're, they're looking into the backfield and biting on the fullback, Warren. All right, so we are now with uh, just a little under four and a half minutes and an official timeout on the field for a measurement here as when he fell, he got very close to the first down marker. Georgia Southern already with 100 total yards rushing today. And if you joined us late, as we see the marker just short of the first down, 52 of that 100 turned in by Kevin Davis on a touchdown run to give Georgia Southern its first score of the day. Jazz Williams is closing in on his sixth consecutive 100-yard rushing game. We mentioned a lot earlier in the, in the game today, but he... Uh, He'll probably get that if, if East Tennessee doesn't make some adjustments to their defense. Georgia Southern had some folks in these parts really shaking their heads in the early part of the season. They started one and two, and that wasn't quite how Mike Sewick had envisioned. Well, but things have turned around, and they've now won five straight, and you see the dominance they've already begun to uh, interject today as regards their rushing totals, 113 against East Tennessee. We've got fourth and one. And I have to say, it's really less than one, maybe one foot. And they're unbalanced to the right, little quarterback sneak, easy, easy make for that first down. One thing about George Southern, Warren, they lost a great line coach this year. I mean, uh, I think the best line coach, other than Jeff Bleemer, those two are the two best in the league, and he became the head coach. Mm. So he had to replace what he did so well, and uh, it took a little while to adjust to the new line coach, but they're back in sync. 
Well, uh, Mike Sewak has said on more than one occasion, when you run the ball, you control the clock. And the way they run the ball, they control many, many games that they're in. We've got first and 10 now, ball at the 47. Everybody now set again and did a little bit of motion. Just about the expiration of the time clock. came up made a great play there. And they stuff him at the line of scrimmage. T.J. Anderson there getting the call as uh, he comes up and is met real hard there at the line. Well, free safety comes inside out here, makes a great play. He, he read the play perfectly, and that's his assignment, and he has to do that. He can't get picked off by the wide receiver coming back to block inside. Second and nine. Ball marked there at, uh, well, we'll call it the 46-yard line. Williams keeping, fakes inside, then throws a little lob pass over the middle. Intercepted at the 16-yard line. The Bucks number 30, Montreal Hartley, out of Hanahan, South Carolina, coming up with that pick. Chad forces this ball down the middle. It's a seam post by the wide receiver. A little bit underthrown. He was off balance, thrown off his heels. He forced that ball. Uh, nobody was open there. He should have run with that ball. Excellent play there by Harkley. Terrific athlete as he goes up and makes a terrific reception himself there of that ball. And that gives East Tennessee uh, the ball first and 10 at the 16-yard line. Chaz is just getting a little greedy there, Warren. He's trying to score quick. From the shotgun again, we'll watch Sanders operate for ETSU. Just one in the backfield. That's Gavin Varner, and he is immediately stuffed and is thrown probably for about a one-yard loss. There's a huge split in the East Tennessee State offensive line there that they were hoping to run that draw play in there, but it closed quickly. Interesting note, uh, as all six touchdowns through the air for Georgia Southern this year have come on the road. <laughs> so they haven't hit for what so people here are kind of wondering, well, why are they throwing it at home anyway? Varner's the biggest threat that East Tennessee has, and he scored six times himself this year. Sanders looking for a receiver. Under a lot of heat, he breaks outside the left side and went and knocked down for another loss at about the 10-yard line. And guess who, Warren? Freddy Pescada. <laughs> we haven't seen him, I guess, in this lineup for a couple of weeks, right? I'll tell you, he's quick, and he has good football sense. They can't block him with one man. He comes off the block, and, and there he is. He reverse pivot out of the block. Grabs his shirt and makes a nice tackle. A little hungry he is to play uh, after uh, not having been a, given an opportunity because of the injury the last couple of weeks. We've got third and 11, and they keep going the other way. Misdirection here. Varner around the left side has room. First down gain and a flag on the play. A little reverse, another reverse to the short side. Gavin Varner, their big running back out of Somerville, South Carolina, with what appears to be first down yardage, flag thrown from the defensive backfield side. You ever wonder how far that, that flag bounces and then they pick it up and throw it some more? He had some hang time on that one. <laughs> uh, that, that was the uh, back judge that called that also. He was a long way away, but obviously it, it must have been pretty obvious. Well, this is uh, a real blow for East Tennessee because they ran a terrific play. They'll repeat the third down, and Varner's first down effort there on that misdirection is really for naught after the offensive penalty. Well, when things go bad, they go bad, and the, the, those penalties just so far just killed them. So we'll try that again, and uh, second verse, same as the first here, third and 11. And that ball is going to be placed here again at about the 13 or so yard line, and it's probably third and maybe closer to 13 or 14 from what I can tell across the way. Sanders looking for a receiver. Tucks it under and runs himself. He's got it out over the 20-yard line to maybe the 23 or 24-yard line before he is brought down by Joe Scott, Georgia Southern's leading tackler. Hunting units onto the field, but at least East Tennessee gets a little breathing room there because they were looking at their own goal line before that run by Sanders over the 20-yard line. See if they get a little more intensity in protecting this punter here. They're going to have to stay with their blocks a little longer. The last time they, uh, we had this block, they, well, they, didn't, they really had a return on here, Warren, looks like. Here's the punt, end over end. Fair catch there by Williams inside the 
30, maybe 32-yard line where they mark it, and Georgia Southern will take over. Decent field position again. If you'd like to keep up with what's going to be on CSS each day, the place for you to go is the CSS website. And that's www.cs slash, I think that's a hyphen, is that what they call that in the uh, sports.com? They call it a slash or a hash. You'll find our weekly schedule there as well as other information about our network. CSS, it's your source for sports in the southeast. First and 10, ball at the 33. The give again up front to that fullback and it's almost like you got to get a steady diet of that and you're going to see it and feel it and taste it all game long and they set you up with that one and then break something outside the one thing a little different about georgia southern this year is there, there's no adrian peterson there uh -huh. so the fullback's not getting as many yards as they did with adrian but it's just as effective if it can freeze the linebackers and keep them inside we're clicking down on the clock right now towards the 18, 17 second mark of the first quarter and another give up the middle again by Georgia Southern. Jermaine Austin, the big fullback, freshman, 5'7", 200 out of Darien, Georgia. I guess two straight purpose calls. The purpose mm -hmm. is to freeze those linebackers and now they're going to come back outside with a pitch to the quarterback keeper. Well, we're at all zeros at the end of this one and the first quarter, the lead belongs to Georgia Southern, 9-0 over East Tennessee. You're watching CSS, and we'll be back with more here as Georgia Southern has a 9-0 lead here after the first quarter. We'll be back to give you more right after this. Just about ready here at Statesboro, Georgia to begin the second quarter. Six national championships here proudly displayed just near Eagle Creek, as they used to always affectionately call it here. Herc Russell used to always kind of Take a little bit of River Eagle Creek and sprinkle it in end zones around the country where they would go. And uh, six national championships proudly displayed here. These Eagles know how to win. Chaz Williams kind of trips over his own feet there in the backfield and goes down for uh, maybe a couple yard loss on this opening possession of the second quarter. That was going to be a counter option. He just slipped and must be a little soft spot there and his foot went right out from under him. That brings on the punting unit. Looks like he might have had a good play to Warren. Good block on the corner. Scott Shelton to punt for Georgia Southern. Deep to receive at about the 25-yard line is Cecil, Cecil Moore. Moore. And we really haven't had a chance to see him much today, but he is a weapon. He does receive that ball in traffic, and a flag ensues there, as I would believe the referee would think he didn't quite give him a little window of opportunity to catch the ball. I may be a little I'm not quick to judge. You think he might have been pushed into him? What do you think? I'm not sure if it wasn't a, a block in the back there. Uh huh. Uh, that's the first we've seen of Cecil Moore today, and yeah. he's, he's one of the best receivers in the league and being pursued and evaluated by the NFL scouts. The penalty is against Georgia Southern, and you'll see here as Moore attempts to get up, and there is a little contact and... That's how the ref saw it, and that means that East Tennessee will get immediate uh, field position here in their first possession of the second quarter. You're going to see that halo call two or three times a ball game now if you watch any other games mm -hmm. on television. It's, uh, it's a tough thing because it's so subjective, two yards, and you're 10, 15 yards away when you're looking at it. Coach Siwak still uh, really, as he continues to say, he's blocked into him. He, uh, yeah, we're going to look at that one more time here. I, I see that. That's, wow. that's a tough call. Okay. I, I'm glad First I didn't ten. make it. First and 10 of the 42. No, you're glad you're not the AD <laughs> of the opposing right. coach. It didn't make it. Yeah, okay. All right, Sanders looking after some play action to throw it out here to Cecil Moore, and he's complete there at about the 45, spins his way over midfield and knocked out of bounds near the 48-yard line. That was a little rollaway count. Okay. That's a little uh, rollaway counter pass, but that's the first intermediate short pass they've thrown. They've tried to go deep so often, and of course Cecil Moore is getting into the mix right now. And he's a great receiver, and he and he's good after he catches the ball too. His yak, his yards after contact, uh, is, is one of the best in the league. Jonathan Wilkerson, the defensive back, making the play there. The only true freshman getting any playing time this year. He's getting a start for Georgia Southern today because of some problems in that area last year, last week rather, against the Citadel. Quick little give here on the right side there for just a little bit of yardage on second and short. And we'll see where they mark this ball and see if in fact East Tennessee is able to convert the first down possibility. This is the first momentum, the first time they've crossed midfield. And uh, that's gonna pick up that whole sideline over there for them as well. 
First down, East Tennessee, 9-0 as we head towards the 14-minute mark here before halftime in Statesboro, Georgia. Welcome along if you've just tuned us in. Walt Nadzak along with Jack Douglas down below, and I'm Warren Pepper here. We're happy to have you with us on just a gorgeous afternoon here in South Georgia. First and 10 at the 45. Sanders with the fake to Spearman, now keeping, and he has nowhere to go, nowhere to hide, and he is brought down for a loss at the 50-yard line. I don't know if we're gonna, we're gonna see that again. It's a good fake inside, and the tight end is wide open. I mean, he's wide open, and we just waited too long to throw the ball. The quarterback didn't look like he was ready to throw, but the tight end is wide open at about 10 yards downfield. Joe Scott of Fitzgerald, Georgia, the leading tackler there, the first to get him. Going off the field now for East Tennessee, Randy Grubb. And we'll see if East Tennessee can get anything going here on second now and 15. Sanders with a little shovel pass to Varner. He's already with Scott, just one of three guys hanging on there as he's brought down maybe close to the line of scrimmage. Georgia Southern just slides down the line of scrimmage with the motion man. I mean, they just ran right with them. They, the whole line went left right along with, with the uh, slot back running that, that little inside shovel pass. We saw Michael Ward also in on that tackle, and he's been out for the last couple of weeks, and that's been of some concern. They had Pescada and Ward, both seniors, not able to be on there. and uh, They kind of got away last week in Charleston uh, with a 28-24 victory. As we look now at a third and 15 opportunity from the 50. Sanders looking and he cannot find a receiver downfield. A huge rush led by number 96, Matt Rio, out of Waycross, Georgia, for the stop in his own backfield. Yeah, he's, he's got to get rid of this ball. He's got to throw it, in, throw it in the dirt, throw it away, uh, make it look like it's somebody you're throwing it to. But he was inside the tackle, so he couldn't throw it out of bounds. That would have been intentional grounding. Simply an easy four-man rush, four on four up front, and uh, they couldn't handle it. So it'll be um, from a fourth and 25 situation, a punt, and it really is a high floater taken on a fair catch inside the 10-yard line. Van Williams cradles it in his arms right there. They'll mark it at about the 10. What a great punt. He turned that thing over. Great hang time. I'm not sure if he's leading the league in punting or not. There are two other great... Well, this defense has uh, done its job to this point, uh, kind of pitching a shutout and really hasn't been awful lot past midfield for East Tennessee as they continue to provide a lot of pressure. But right now, Georgia Southern with 103 yards right now, total rushing, East Tennessee has 36. Here's the pitch out, the ball's on the ground, it could be picked up and into the end zone, touchdown East Tennessee. Scott Brunette, the sophomore out of Pioneer, Tennessee, on the spot there as that ball just was gobbled up inside the five, and all of a sudden, East Tennessee is on the board. We get a chance to look. We look at this. Jack Douglas down the field knows what went wrong right here. That, that ball was clamped by the fullback. No, the, either player knew which one had the ball and it, and it fell on the ground. I mean, it was very indecisive on that, on that putting that pocket on the, the ball on the hip. For the point after here. You gotta get Jack's comments on that, Warren. Yeah, we will talk to Jack Douglas here momentarily as we've got a little problem getting all the guys that are necessary on this point after team. And we've got time running out. If they don't get this off, there's gonna be uh, expiration. About three seconds remaining on the clock and the kick is up. And it just does it's, make it over the crossbar. It's a little ugly, but it's good. There is a flag <laughs> on the far side of the field. There is a flag. Let's see what that was about. As East Tennessee really had a problem getting everybody in set. The point after, though, did, you know, I'm, the goalpost of the crossbar is just a little over 10. <laughs> that went 10-2. And just did get over, but it did get over and it did get through. And the East Tennessee guys are walking off uh, fully of the uh, opinion that it wasn't against them. And it looks like they've got their first seven points. They're going to wave that flag off with a game all of a sudden very close. Eagles leading 9-7. We'll be back in just a moment. There's only 11.38 remaining here in the second quarter. And the Eagles are hanging on to a two-point lead during the week that you might not have seen all of. And here's a kickoff after East Tennessee's defense puts them on the board. And that's brought in by Ant Williams at about the one. He's up over the 20, the 25, and he's trying to shake loose at about the 26-yard line before he is 
brought down there by East Tennessee. He had a little seam there, and he took it real quick. He's got good quickness, and he, he's breaking on a dime out there. Well, I tell you, I have seen schools uh, this year kick away from him. We've got an injury down on the field real quickly, and while they're attending to that, we'll uh, let you know that uh, Stephen Jackson of Columbia, South Carolina, a freshman for uh, East Tennessee, is shaken up on the play. And uh, while they attend to him, we'll just kind of reset the scene here for you and let you know that these East Tennessee guys, uh, while still young, they're the only team in the entire league that returned all 11 starters on defense this year. So we said coming in that the defense would have to do uh, an awful lot to keep this game close. And here we are in the early part of the second quarter, and that certainly is prophetic as East Tennessee's defense has now put itself on the board after that fumble inside the five-yard line that they converted into a touchdown. Let's see how Georgia Southern now responds because they've really dominated the game up until this point, but on the scoreboard, they're only up two, nine, seven. They've lost a little momentum there with that, that fumble. That uh, really hurt them. And East Tennessee State, so I think they've done a pretty fair job stopping the option so far, just that one break, and uh, they seem to be making adjustments on the corner a little better. Mike Siwak said last week that uh, we got older. He said a lot of guys got gray hairs on offense and gray hairs on defense, yeah. and uh, they escaped 28-24 in Charleston last week against the Citadel after trailing that game virtually three and yeah. some quarters. Oh, yeah. And at one point, 15 to nothing. Mm -hmm. so, uh, we'll show you the standings just while we have a break, and we'll also let you know how this injury progresses here on the field. But Georgia Southern is a top of the five and one conference record right now. They're six and two overall. They're also ranked ninth nationally. Furman and Wofford, both two very good schools right now with records of four and one. App State's three and two in the conference and VMI in its final year in the league is two and three. And then you see East Tennessee State, the team here today that needs to win its remaining three teams to have its fourth consecutive winning team. Western is two and four. Citadel with only one win in the league out of five opportunities. And Chattanooga still winless after four conference games. So that gives you a, kind of a look as they continue to uh, look at this injured ETSU player who was on the field. And this was uh, during the kickoff return that he uh, was shaken up here at about the 15-yard line. And that has brought a halt to play with about 11.26 remaining in the game. You know, Warren, you know, those, the first half or so. those conference standings are so misleading because if you ask any coach in the league who they would not want to play next week, it would probably be the Citadel. Huh. Uh, they've lost some heartbreaking games there, and, and they've really improved. So the standings are, they'll probably change before the year's over, but uh, it's been a very competitive year, and uh, the Citadel has improved dramatically. Well, they're continuing as uh, things have really kind of come to a halt here. We're going to take a break here as they do help the injured player up now and uh, get him to the sidelines. We'll be back to continue this. East Tennessee 9-7 trailing Georgia Southern. 49, Williams keeping right up the middle after a little counter move in the backfield, and he has it inside the 40-yard line. Ball brought down about the 38 as Georgia Southern seems to have found new life immediately after this game has now been narrowed to 9-7. A good counter option here. He has the lead blocker, a pulling lineman. He has the, the uh, wing back out front. He has a pitch man behind him, and he has a split end blocking on the corner. Great, uh, great play. Well executed. Stop made there by Scott Brunette. First down and 10 at the 39. Williams again keeping around the left side. Maybe a two, three yard gain. We do want to let folks know who might have been watching before that last break that Stephen Jackson, the injured player, was able to uh, trot off the field on his own power. And it looks like he's going to be okay. 10 minutes remaining as it's a 9-7 lead for Georgia Southern, a team that's won five straight coming in seeming to be on a roll really widespread right now as Williams brings them up to center on a second and seven in motion number 34 Mark Myers and he's trapped in his own backfield there uh, maybe no gain at all the corner came up tough and and the uh, split end here you'll see uh, wasn't able to block the corner coming up looking at your screen right here and number 22 doesn't make the block no gain. So it'll be third, and let's call it, uh, I don't know, maybe 11 and a half or so, and uh, we'll see how they shake this one out. Um, well, they're going to make it third and nine now 
uh, at the 38-yard line. Just one man in the backfield there. That's Jermaine Austin. He's there for blocking. Lofted downfield to a wide-open receiver. First down yardage and Moore's Dream Walden with the reception, averaging almost 12 yards per reception this year. And he got just a little bit more than that to convert the first down. This, this time Walden takes off deep like he's going deep and comes back and runs a, a deep curl, which is uh, wide open because they're so worried about him going deep. And he came back, a great throw, a, a great pattern run by Walden. Allen Davis on the coverage there along with Gerald Sensiball. And we've got it first and 10, 20 at the 23-yard line. Myers in motion, then comes to a halt. And then he comes in motion again with the play clock getting close to zero. And it's Austin who's up the middle there for a short game. Let's get an update downfield uh, from Jack Douglas with an injury update. Jack? Hold on one second. Adam Howe. All right, we'll get right, to Jack. Uh, Jack, you with us? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, Adam Howe, uh, offensive player for ETSU. He looks, he appears to have suffered a concussion, and he was asking for a large prize and coke on the sideline. So I'm not sure if he's going to return this afternoon. Right. There are two offensive linemen on Georgia Southern sideline who have suffered stingers, but the offensive line are tough guys, and they'll usually come back and and play through that pain. So. Uh, that's the injury report for second quarter. Back up to you guys. Inside the 10-yard line goes Jermaine Austin now, and Georgia Southern definitely knocking on the door here as they are marching towards that far end zone with 8.30 remaining in the second quarter. First and goal at the 9, Georgia Southern. Williams keeps, then pitches to the left side. Close to the end zone is Zareem Walden, who came around and took that pitch around that left corner, and he has it right at the goal line there, but he's knocked out of bounds, maybe at about the one-and-a-half to two-yard line. Georgia Southern came out with three receivers to the right with the single back set in the backfield. Came out with the option to the left. Short-handed on the other side because the defense had shifted over to the three wide outs uh, to the offense's right, and, and there's nobody there. There he is on the outside there as he tries to stretch that ball across. I, you know, that's becoming more and more in vogue, but I find it more and more dangerous, quite frankly, exactly. at times. Here we are now, second down. Williams, yes, it's yeah, that Williams touchdown. Just following that blocking on the left side, and he scores his 15th touchdown of the year as Georgia Southern now with its second touchdown of the day. This, is a, this is again, is a favorite wishbone-type play. You just follow the fullback that you just faked to, and you follow him right through the hole. Very effective. They often say uh, on a 10-yard, 10 10-play 10 drive going 74 yards that a mark of a good team is how it responds after it's just been scored on, and they certainly did answer the bell there. The point after is up, and it's good. And Georgia Southern has gone back out in front now with a little working margin and now leads 16 to 7 over East Tennessee after that little one yard plunge by Chaz Williams. Here's another look. There it is right here. You follow him right inside. It wasn't even a good fake, just a very cheap, what we call a cheap fake in the, in the football business. Just follow that. Fullback's actually blocking on linebacker in the gap. Well, they have so many options in this triple option that it's almost, you, you, you have to take the bait there. 10 plays, 74 yards with just 324 needed to do so, and it culminates on a one-yard run by Chaz Williams. Again, his 15th touchdown of the year. Williams to this point uh, with 13 carries today, and uh, Austin also has had a pretty good afternoon so far with eight carries himself. 38 yards for Williams, uh, 27 yards for Austin, so they're doing what they do best, and that is run the football and they're set to kick off here for Georgia Southern's attempt to uh, see what they can do with the remaining eight minutes. East Tennessee has scored, and they did it defensively, just a little bit of really manhandled in the opening quarter and have not really had much to say offensively in this game at all. Good teams respond, Warren, and Georgia Southern to the Southern Conference Championships, and that's because they're able to come back after something bad happens to them. They come back and get on the board and, and regain the momentum. Here's the kickoff, in over in, and it's taken at about the 10-yard line. Knuckles moving his way out over the 25-yard line, and that is where East Tennessee 
will take possession here with just about eight minutes remaining in the second quarter. It's tough to win a ball game at Paulson Stadium. Now, over the years, uh, they have won 90% of the games here since this place was built. What, uh, mid-80s, 84 or so when they uh, opened the uh, Paulson Stadium here? I'll tell you, Warren, as part of the NCAA football committee, I've, I've had uh, at least eight to ten playoff games here, and I have never seen them lose in this city. <laughs> they don't so. very often. <laughs> they this year, though, Wofford came in and got them, much to a lot of home folks' surprise. There's Gavin Varner trying to work hard upside there uh, to get some positive yardage for East Tennessee as they elect in this series to start with a run up the middle on that first and ten. We've got some other scores we'll pass along to you here this afternoon, and we specifically are going to pay attention to the day. Uh, conference scores. Western Carolina leading VMI. Six and a half minutes left there. They're up two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. App State and Chattanooga in a close one, and the Mocs are leading just inside the early part of the fourth quarter. Citadel losing by 20 in the fourth to Wofford. Second and seven at the 29. Sanders still under a hard rush and hit extremely hard there on that far side by number 54, Winston Hardison. Boy, was he leveled as he kind of broke free for a little running room. Sanders hasn't been able to shake anybody out of there when he goes back to throw. He, he just doesn't have any room to run, and, he, and he's an excellent runner. He, he's the third leading quarterback rusher in this league. At some point, you have to give credit to the coverage downfield, too, in addition to the heavy rush. But, boy, are they just getting back there with regularity. Check that number out again. It's this Pescada guy. Yep. <laughs> Pressure all the way around. And, boy, does the East Tennessee have them spread out now on a third and nine in the 27. Sanders looking for a little drop swing pass out to Varner. Varner close to the first down, and he gets it and is close to 45-yard line before he's wrestled out of bounds and picks up a good first down for the Buccaneers. James Young, the free safety, coming up out of Tampa, Florida to make that stop there. As Gavin Varner there is able to corral that short little pass. You mentioned earlier, Walt, that yeah. maybe the short stuff would Absolutely. help him. Absolutely. Watch this little one-hand grab down here. I mean, he really makes a great play. And then the yards after contact, what the coaches call yak yards. Look at those legs going. He, he picked up another five or six yards after being hit by two or three people. First and ten at the 45. 16 to 7 the score. Georgia Southern on top in motion and a fake pass there by number 31 Andrew Knuckles but it fooled no one as Freddie Pescada says I'm a senior baby I've been here done that and he didn't bite on it one single bit and Knuckles paid the price as he's wrestled out of bounds. Looks like Pescada was about as quick as that running back on this play here. Problem East Tennessee's having they haven't been able to establish any kind of a running game putting tremendous pressure on the passing game. Sanders just doesn't have time to set up and do what he wants to do. They've got to establish some running game. Pescada, we mentioned the senior having missed the last two games, uh, really showing a lot of happiness to be playing today. Barner trying to break a little counter play around the right side there, and he is stopped again by Pescada and oh, yeah. help from Joe Scott. Pescada's just not fooled by the misdirection here. He's got help out there too, but I tell you what, he, he just reads the play so well. He, he looks like, I tell you, I, he didn't play last week in Charleston, but mm -hmm. I, uh, <laughs> he's playing today. Well, as a senior, you know you've got limited opportunities, and uh, every game is so precious, and you can really sense in his little spring in his step today how happy he is to be back out. Third and 13 at the 42. Sanders with room up the middle on a drop back, and then that hole closes quickly as he gets back to maybe the line of scrimmage. Joe Scott and Derek Butler both there to meet him in a kind of a quarterback sandwich, and he stopped without any hope of a first down opportunity. He just doesn't have any place to go here. It looks like he's got room to run up the middle, but 43, he just sits in there and reads him. They might be playing a, a spy, I mean, a spy in the quarterback to, to watch him for that little draw and quarterback run out, or draw up the middle. Anthony Williams here on a floating punt that is going to fall short of the 20-yard line and then bounces around. East Tennessee does eventually down it at about the 20, and that's where Georgia Southern will start. We're inside five minutes of this second quarter. Can the Eagles get on the board before halftime? We'll be back with more as Georgia Southern leads East Tennessee State 16-7. to 
As Paul Hamilton is trying to keep his defense uh, with their heads up here, they are responsible for the only East Tennessee points of this first half as it's a 16-7 lead now for Georgia Southern. We've got 4.29 remaining as they put it in play, first and 10 of the 21. Chaz Williams with that keeper around the left side. Look at the running room and how quickly he covers ground. 20, 35, 30, 20. Can he take it all the way? He's finally forced out of bounds at about the seven yard line. Ooh. Boy, does he get down the field in a hurry. Chaz Williams, the sophomore out of Apopka, Florida. He showed some acceleration there. He picked up that momentum when he hit that seam. He was going full speed. Watch him turn up inside that seam right there. And he's and he turns running on away the from people right here. now. Uh, guys with angles finally get up to him, but he runs past and away from people. Got a little pressure at an angle here, but my goodness, he, he's quick. 71 yards, that run totals. Williams keeping this way around the right side, and boy, is he met front and back by East Tennessee for a loss. Got sandwiched there, front and back. Yes, he did. That's a little chaswich there. Brandon Calton, the first to hit him there, and he had a little bit of help. And there's a loss on the play, uh, unusual loss there today, the way things have been going for this ground game for the Eagles. Jordan Southern's quarterbacks have held up over the past years. When Greg Hill was playing, his he, he, skinny, I mean, just looked like a stick, and he, he was durable, though. It's amazing how many hits they take. Second and eight. Give up the middle to Austin. And he may have gotten uh, right there. Is that ball loose? No, I think they're saying he's already on the ground. Uh, I will mention, you know, we talked about Williams coming in, averaging 104 yards rushing per game. Right now, after that 71-yard run, he has 109 in the first half. So that's six straight 100-yard yes. rushing games. He's making Tracy Ham looking like second rate here. Well, <laughs> I never thought they'd ever say Tracy who, <laughs> yeah. but my goodness, is he continuing to put numbers up as a sophomore. We have third and six with the ball at the six inside three minutes. Williams still has it, and he kind of lowers his head and does not get in, and maybe gets down to about the three, maybe four-yard line. Fourth down. That's the play they ran to get down there before their last touchdown with loaded to the right with three wide outs, little motion back to the short side. And East Tennessee's undermanned over there. Some of the Georgia Southern folks uh, yelling go. Some of the others, I think, were saying no. I'm not so sure where we stand here, but we've got fourth and goal at the two. And the crowd now on its feet, kind of getting into it here as the clock winds down to the two-minute mark here in the second quarter. Oh, Eagles that's... on the board, 16-7, fourth and two. Williams keeps it and falls into the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. I wanted to call that play, but I didn't want to interrupt you, Warren. But I just say, you want to, you want to guess he's going to follow the fullback through there? Right. That's exactly what he did. Well, you can call what you see right here, Walt. That's coming in. There it is, the fake to the fullback, and then follow him right through the play. We see classic, it from that angle, and here's play. a little closer one. Yeah. And every time yeah. we yeah. see it, yeah. it yeah. results so in another nothing touchdown. Nothing's changed. Williams on the two-yard touchdown run, and that culminates a five-play drive with the point after that is up. And is good. That's a big play with only two minutes to go and a half. That's a big drive. Well, they got the ball at about 429, and I'm thinking, well, you know, they could methodically march it up. Yeah. Uh, they didn't need half that, it seems, to uh, 213 is what they need there. And now Williams has rushed already with uh, that last bit of yardage there, uh, close to 110 already on the day. And uh, he came in averaging 104. So what immediately just seems like a blink of an eye ago, uh, uh, as he's at 115 officially, I'm told now, uh, was a very close game. Now is a 23-7 game. And just moments ago, it was, what, 9-7? 9-7 and two quick scores here just turns this thing totally around. So yep. the kicking unit back onto the field here with 2-16 remaining. And Paul Hamilton can only watch from across the way and hope they can get to the locker room and make some adjustments here. And I guess the, the, the most aggravating and frustrating part from a defensive coordinator when you come against Georgia Southern is you know what they're going to do 88% of the time, and you can't stop them. That's exactly right. It's just repetition. And 
And, you, and you know, the worst thing about this ball game is Georgia Southern makes great halftime adjustments. They oh. did it last week. <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> I don't know what they have left to adjust, but uh, uh, they just watch what you do. And if you don't adjust at halftime and change, they are going to, and they're going to find that weakness. Well, it's quite a tradition here in Statesboro, and uh, these folks showing up here today, they're guessing the crowd may be 15, 16,000 or so, and uh, they're used to seeing a victory whenever they come to Paulson Stadium through the years, and we're seeing more evidence of that today. Here's the kickoff here uh, for East Tennessee. Knuckles, oh, what a big hole up the middle, and then it closes at about the 27-yard line. D. Robinson with the stop there for Georgia Southern. This is family day down here, Warren. This weekend's family weekend, and the parents of mostly freshmen show up, a great crowd. Uh, it's similar to homecoming, but it's not for alums. It's for families of hmm. students, but uh, not necessarily alumni of, of the university. Interesting. That's an interesting approach because yeah. different schools do it different ways. I guess some have parents' day, and they bring in mom and dad, yeah. but family day is an interesting approach as well. And they had the Hall of Fame induction dinner last night. It was a very nice affair. And, uh, I attended that and, and enjoyed it very much. 207 is where uh, Sanders will put his guys in uh, over center, and there is movement and flags flying all over. Once you get down in that three-point stance, you can't you can't get up again. You've got to you can move if you're in a two-point stance, but once that hand goes down the ground, you can't move. So we've got an immediate prior to the snap, false start on the offense, five-yard penalty remains first down. All right, that penalty explained there, and that'll be a little deeper in the hole there for East Tennessee after getting a pretty good kickoff return there by Knuckles. Now all of a sudden they are a little further back than expected, and it'll be first and 15 with the ball placed at the 22-yard line. I don't think East Tennessee will sit on the ball. I think they've got to try to score here. They have a decent thrower, and they've got a great receiver out here in number two and see some more. Well, they've really put the clamps on him today. Aaron Whitaker has been on him all day, and that's a slam to the ground there by Eric Hadley, the defensive tackle out of Commonsville, Georgia. And he gets there and slams Sanders to the ground, the fifth sack. He, he has no time to do anything. He comes out here, he's looking right now, but they're right, right there all over him. Missed block up on the up, upside. Defensive guy took an inside yeah. grip. No, no, no. <laughs> Their two-minute drill yeah. might be the option. Yeah, Chaz Williams uh, showed very quickly a while ago that uh, the old quick strike ability is there at every moment from any place on the field. ETSU right now with uh, nine plays today for negative yards, and that is an indicator right there of just how hard that rush has been. And at the same time, I don't want to by any means, slight the secondary, because I, I believe that goes hand in glove there. The, the yeah. coverage down there by those guys in the secondary really does enable those guys to keep that big push up front. With a little time he's getting to throw, I'm going to reemphasize again, they've got to throw some shorter patterns and short crossing patterns and uh, try to get out of the mold of setting up in five, six yards deep. He, he just doesn't have time to do that. Second and... 23 with the ball now on the 14. Sanders rolling to his right. Looking for a receiver. He does have a completion. That going to Michael Rader there. And that ball is complete before he's knocked out of bounds as David Young is there for the stop. In order to have time to throw, they're going to have to go to more of the sprint ups like that. First and second down, short yardage, and, and eat up the clock. Another timeout called on the field. You'll see Raider for the season, uh, 14 receptions and averaging nine, a minute, 20 left. Be a top he official, he initially called official timeout, but number 77 for Georgia Southern, Paul Collins says, uh, hey, you know, there's no way you're going to stop the game for me on this one. I'll just jog off, and they insert Charlie Hopkins in his place, a freshman out of Eberton, Georgia, and he gets a little time now as Georgia Southern's got a minute 19 on the clock that incomplete pass does provide that amount of purpose and that stops the clock here on second and ten from the 48. The three receivers up to the wide side and they run it to that side Back. where Mark Myers continues to pick it up very close to the first down. They're just getting East Tennessee spread out so far. Blues finally forced out of bounds and that stops the clock, a minute 13 remaining. Myers is a very clever little runner. Yes, he might he only be 5'7", but he, he's got good speed, good quickness, and, no, and he has good instincts. 
these guys all are very, you know, they're all in that 5, 10, 200, 7, 5, 9, 1, 9, in that area. Myers himself with uh, four carries today and 35 yards. So uh, he doesn't get a lot of touches, but as they go ahead and uh, line this thing up, they're going to see it is a first down. So we've got first and 10 at the 38 with a minute 13 Williams again to Myers. Myers down inside the 30, brought down near the 26, maybe the 25-yard line. They're just, uh, they're just getting the defense out of balance to the wide side and come back to the short side. You can watch this here coming back, a little counteraction back to the short side. And it's Myers again, five, all five, seven of them. Protects that ball going down, too. I like to see that. Another first down gain. Here we are at the 25. Williams looks, floats it up. That ball flies out of bounds, and he really just threw it away there. The pass intended for Derek Owen. We are inside a minute. Listen to a couple of numbers in time, I'm sure. Georgia Southern to this point has rushed for 256 yards. East Tennessee, 14. That's why I've been saying that you've got to establish some running game. I don't care if it's pro football, peewee football, high school or college. You've got to establish a running game to be successful. 55 seconds on the clock. Second and 10 from the 25. Movement in the backfield there, and the uh, referee immediately throws that one. A pretty easy call there, all things considered, after the little, uh, excuse me, movement there in the backfield. But the referee, Lewis Foreman, certainly was able to see that without any problem. That'll go against Georgia Southern. One of the few penalties against Georgia Southern. False start. On the offense, five-yard penalty. Remains second down. One of the few penalties against them this entire half. 23-7. No time, obviously, off the clock at that point. I mean, it's very clear. <laughs> these, guys, these guys want a little bit more. And uh, they're going to go ahead and continue to march that direction as long as time remains. Second and 15 now with the ball spotted at the 30. Williams looking long. Floats it to the end zone. Ball's but incomplete in the end zone. Couple of players covering on that end. Intended for Carl Kearney. But also covering in uh, was Tiller and Hartley. And they both kind of had him squared away there in the end zone. That was a takeoff of the run that Myers has been making out here to the short side came back off of it and threw but there was double coverage i think the pitch was there on the run wow great pretty play. well placed ball in that area just uh, kind of a jump ball situation we've got 49 seconds on the clock still third and 15. going around that left side williams keeps it kind of tucks it up inside there and he gets it over the 30 yard line they'll probably mark it about the 27. A couple of East Tennessee players came out uh, as if they had gotten the ball. Lamar Bean, as a matter of fact, was uh, almost gesturing with the ball after the ball had been whistled dead. And we got it back. Uh, looks like field goal units are going to come on and uh, with about the clock ticking away right now, see if they get this one off in time here as Scott Shelton will attempt this field goal. 17, 16, the clock continuing to tick. 45-yard attempt here from Scott Shelton at about the 35-yard line. Clock continuing to tick, and the ball is up, and it is long enough, and it's good enough. And as the clock ticks to zero, Shelton's 45-yard field goal gives Georgia Southern three more. And they now lead 26-7 to after taking a 9-7 to lead into the early part of this second quarter. There was a terrific second quarter performance there by Georgia Southern after East Tennessee was able to narrow that lead with its defense. And Shelton's 45-yard field goal is his longest of the season. He had a lot of leg in that one, Warren. He really got his leg into it. Got well, his hips turned, got a lot of momentum. Took him a while before he relayed that uh, the referee said it was good. He thought it was good from the moment it left his foot. Let's go downstairs to Jack Douglas. Thank you, guys. I'm down here with Paul Hamilton, ETSU coach. Coach, uh, you had a tough time in the first half, couldn't establish the running game, passing game, couldn't get enough time for the throw. How, how are you going to correct those things? Well, for one thing, we got we got to come out and play hard in the second half. I give Georgia Southern all the credit in the world. They're dominating us uh, with their defensive football team and offensively. They've got some things going. So 
Uh, we'll find out if we can come out and respond and try to play like a good football team and just play hard. That's the biggest thing I want to see right now if we're going to come out and play hard. All right, thanks a lot, Coach, and good luck in the, in the second half. Thank you, Ben. Back up to Walton Ward. It's 26-7, to 7, and we will come back with more here from Statesboro, Georgia. Georgia Southern on top here, back with more on CSS. I'm Georgia Southern leading East Tennessee. Warren Pepper and Walt Nadjack here as we've had the call for the first half. Walt, let's look at some of those first half highlights as Georgia Southern did jump out early. A couple changes of momentum in the first half there. Uh, it looked like Georgia Southern had a, had a real shot at turning this thing around early and, and putting it away. We had a great run here by Davis. Um, that one was for 52 <laughs> yards, but the defense of East Tennessee did respond. Yes, they did, and, and the pullback uh, tried to clamp down on the football there. The quarterback didn't pull it out. The result of fumble. This Chaz is Williams cool. then took over in the and, second and quarter. Chaz, he's just falling his pullback through the hole. It, this is a classic wishbone play. They adapted it to the double wing. Williams already has 115 yards. They got a season-long 45-yard field goal by Shelton at the very end. And that's why they have such a dominance, 26 to 7 at halftime. We look at some of the first half stats. Look at the yards rushing there, 259 to 14. I've been saying all you have to establish a running game. You have to do that because Georgia Southern's got quick defensive linemen. They put pressure on the quarterback. If you don't establish a running game, you're going to be pressured into throwing and you don't have time to get that done. The time of possession really inconsequential, even though at first blush you would think that Georgia Southern would have had it all that time. Five sacks, though, by Georgia Southern, and that really speaks to all the defensive pressure they put on Sanders in that East Tennessee backfield all afternoon. We'll take a break. We're about ready to start this third quarter here and see what happens in the second half as Georgia Southern leads East Tennessee State 26-7 as the shadows are lengthening and so has the score as Georgia Southern has now moved out to a 26 to 7 lead over East Tennessee. East Tennessee does receive here to start the second half. Let's see if any adjustments were made at halftime that allows Paul Hamilton's team to get back in this game. That ball returned to about the 30 maybe well they didn't quite get there just over the 22 yard line looks like where they want to stop it and that's where east tennessee will take over for its opening possession there is a flag way back downfield inside the far 40 yard line and we'll see what that means and we'll see if they'll just uh, have to kick it again or wait and see exactly what that i'm not sure anybody else has even really noticed the guy back down here Seems like georgia southern's offside on the kickoff mm -hmm. This drive is really important to East Tennessee State. This first possession really uh, can turn the momentum around. If they're going to get back in this ball game, they're going to have to do a good job of, of uh, moving that football right now. Well, we're going to have a do-over here, and uh, there was a little procedure problem there on the kicking team. And most of the shadows here have totally engulfed the home side with the far side now uh, just still bathed in sunshine. And you mentioned earlier the folks on the hills, and uh, that's always kind of an engaging area uh, at Paulson Stadium where folks come in and put a big old blanket out and just kind of sit back and uh, you don't have to have maybe the 50 yard line seats but that's just a terrific little southern fried football action right going on well, if you on look there. over there all the youngsters have their cardboard uh, boxes that they slide down the hill on the grass just like a sled right all right we'll do it again here a little further back this time and it's number 31 knuckles who brings it up and he's over the 30 he's to the 35 brought down at about the 38 yard line and a couple of flags come flying in Jack Sherman does make the uh, stop there for Georgia Southern, but again, we've had two plays and two penalty flags in the space of about uh, 20 seconds. Holding against East Tennessee, the receiving team this time. And we'll see what that does. Uh, they're gonna give up good field position. Yeah. There. That's a shame because they had good field position. There was nice return. Holding. And they're going Holding backwards the again. 10 yard foul. 10 yard penalty was spotted a foul. Must have been pretty obvious, Warren. Three flags flew by there. Wow. I mean, everybody saw it. One of those flags looked like it had a grapefruit in it. That thing was huge. All right, so we are finally underway here in the third quarter. That's 14.39. It seems like uh, it's been a while since the clock left the 15-minute mark, but very little has really happened because of the uh, penalties were both sides. So they'll start as it all turns out here at the 24-yard line to start the third quarter, their first possession of the second half. 
Sanders still at quarterback, 5'11 senior there. And he operates from the shotgun, rolling to his right. Looks to throw, can't, then tucks it up and does escape the first guy that hit him, had him for a huge loss there. Number 98, that's Eric Hadley, and the Thomasville, Georgia sophomore was able to still force a loss on the play. It looks like one of the adjustments East Tennessee State's made at halftime is to try to get Sanders on the corner on the, on the sprint out with the run pass option, but Georgia Southern's not buying it in that play. So there's an immediate loss, and that forces second and 12 with the ball at the 22. 26 to 7, and this game was 9 to 7 early second quarter. But boy, did Georgia Southern turn it on. Sanders floats one out. There is an attempted pass to Cecil Moore. And there's a flag on the far side of the play as the defender, Aaron Whitaker, came in there on the defense. I think what happens, too, when you get that one arm on the, around the waist and you just rest it on his back, they're going to call it all the time. Well, he's averaging, more is here, 16 yards a catch, but was extremely ineffective in the first half. They never really got the ball to him. There were two factors, That's pretty good coverage, mm -hmm. and the other one is not enough time touchdown. to throw and get set and throw the ball. Defensive penalty, automatic first down, so that enables a first and 10 for East Tennessee with that ball marked at about the 30-yard line. Sanders with the give to Varner. Garver tries to spin out of the initial hit and falls close to the 34-yard line. Well, a few positive running plays they've had, Warren. Michael Ward does make the stop there, and Ward's another senior who was unable to play uh, last couple of games because of injuries, and we've watched both Ward and Freddie Pascada really show uh, just how much they've been missing uh, the last couple of weeks and how happy they are to be back out here in front of this home crowd on family day at Paulson Stadium. Second and six, ball at the 34 from the shotgun. We see Sanders rolling this time to his left, throwing with his right across his body. It's complete down to Michael Rader, and he gets a little extra yardage after the reception before he's brought down again by Michael Ward. I, I think Paul Hamilton and his staff have really established that the only way they're going to throw the ball successfully is to sprint out, get out of all that traffic in the middle and throw short and try to make something happen, and that's just exactly what, what they did right here. Another extra four or five yards after the initial contact, and here we are, first and 10, 47, give to Varner. He's on the right side, and he gets maybe four yards as he falls to the ground. Oh, breaking that 50-yard line, they're going to mark it about the 47. Just that motion of the sprint out now has, has got Georgia Southern getting a little bit wider in their gaps and giving a little bit of running room here. So I thought I look for East Tennessee State to continue this until Georgia Southern does something to stop it. Good opening drive put together so far by East Tennessee as Coach Paul Hamilton seems to have put together a formula for moving the ball after being very ineffective doing so in the first half. Second and six, ball here given on the right side. That is number eight, and that's Nick Spearman. Telegraphed this whole all, this play all the way. It was, it was no deception, no misdirection, and Jordan Southern just flew to the ball. Spearman, another one of the low country of South Carolina athletes at Hamilton. Slow developing recruited. play right here at 74. Could have got called for a hold right there, Warren. Yep. Third down now and seven. And the ball's marked at midfield. Varner goes out. Coming into the game, Scott Carter, senior out of Knoxville. East Tennessee's always run one screen pass, Warren. I, I, it was successful. I think they need to come back to that. Sanders looking, keeping. Maybe three yards or so, and he is eventually brought down by the tandem of Pescada and McIntyre. It looked like that was going to be a sprint out option, but it never had time to develop. Sanders turned up so quick. He comes right out here, and he's predetermined. He's got a trail man to pitch to, but he, he's not even looking at him, so it was a run all the way by the quarterback. Aaron Bass looking right into that sun as it kind of settles in here in uh, Statesboro late this Saturday afternoon. He is about at the 40-yard line. Ant Williams at about the 10 to receive. Fair catch called, and he's caught. Uh, he caught 
lost the ball at about the 15 yard line. I thought we were going to have another problem with a defender or someone running into the uh, the receiver on that end, but uh, he was able to sidestep. Well, those other halos involved a blocker and a, a, a cover man, so mm -hmm. it's a little confusing down there. Southern Conference football, Division I AA football here on a very sun slash Saturday afternoon. And here is the first possession of the third quarter for Georgia Southern. They start at the 14-yard line. Chaz Williams with that ever popular give oh, to Jermaine Austin. That's, that's another one of those purpose plays. We'll, we'll show you Williams' numbers from that first half. And we mentioned coming in that he averaged uh, this year 104 yards a game. He had 118 rushing in the first two quarters today. Second and seven, Georgia Southern. The fake inside, then the toss outside to Walden, and Walden gets a first down and knocked out of bounds near the 26-yard line. It's a great block by number 77, the right tackle here coming out on the corner. They're leaving the fullback freeze the inside, and, and the tackle comes outside and blocks on the corner. You're going to see him in the screen right there. Georgia Southern's run 44 plays today. 38 of them have been on the ground. And that's pretty consistent with uh, what they do coming in. We said coming in as we have a first down opportunity and Williams runs around the left side looking for room. Drops for a loss though behind the line of scrimmage. And they come in with the profile. Yeah, their MO is they're gonna run it and they run it 88% of the time through the course of this year so far. They were unbalanced to the left there, and it was just a rollout sweep, quarterback sweep. There was no misdirection and no putting the ball in the belly of the fullback. It was quarterback sweep all the way. Most of the crowd really stuck around here in the second half, even though uh, Georgia Southern was able to really pull away in the second quarter after enjoying a, a slim 9-7 lead, second down, 10 at the 27. So there's no loss on the last play. Williams this time on the pitch to the outside. Walden. First net and then tripped up well and then was he really hit hard there and knocked out of bounds by Gerald Sensiball. The guy that made that play is watch um, Montrell, Hart, Hart, Montrell Hartley here. He really made the play. Number 30. He forced that pitch wide. He had the first shot at the tackle and, and so help came. He, he stopped that play. Well, good shot there by the sideline camera kind of hanging in there for that last hit. And that presents us with a third and 11 after that loss with the ball at the 26. Third and 11 is not necessarily a passing play for a third seven. Dropping but back though, he is looking across the outside and all alone there is T.J. Anderson and he stays on his feet over the 45 to about the 46 yard line. I think you'll see that Tony Tiller fell down here in the coverage. Slipped and fell and lost his footing. Watch number four out here. Secondary, he slipped and fell. Left him wide open. Right there. That sure did. They had two receivers out here to occupy the corner and the safety. And the corner, uh, Tiller fell down. First down, 10 now, ball at 46. And that seemed to wake up everybody as the band strikes up a chord. And we've got inside nine minutes, third quarter. And the give immediately to Austin. And he gets little or no yardage. A little misdirection counter to the fullback inside. East Tennessee didn't bite on it. Time out here as the clock will stop as they get the chains all squared away here on that far sideline. Well, these shadows are getting longer and longer, Warren. Daylight savings time is gone. Yeah, now they've got them all squared away. It looks like some of the, uh, the visiting coaches' headphones and cords, you know how coaches walk up and down and back and forth and uh, it makes a great case for uh, wireless communication because they, by the time by the time they get back and forth after a while and, and coaches aren't the most calm individuals at, on occasion and the, the toughest job in the house may be the guy who's just off the coach's shoulder trying to keep all those wires squared away. Sometimes the problem with wireless communication is you get the local police department, the fire well, department, and everybody else listening in. Then they start calling you to call plays. Well, depending <laughs> on, uh, yeah, depending on the scoreboard, you need all the help you can get sometimes. Second and 11, ball at the 45, Williams back to pass. Looking, looking, uh, now he pumps and then fires downfield, and it's just tipped. 
by number 30 for East Tennessee, who got a hand in that Montreal Hartley again out of Hanahan, South Carolina, who really looks like he may have saved a long, long completion. Chaz could have added to his rushing uh, totals right here. He had a great shot to make it, uh, at least 10 yards here, wide open. He thought he could go deep and, and make the completion, but it was covered well. Great play by Hartley, the 6'1 junior there out of uh, Hanahan, South Carolina. Third and 11. Chaz Williams today, 2 of 8 for 38 yards and one interception. Third and 11 now at the 45 again. And here we go around the right side for just a couple of yards. P.J. Anderson with the carry. And he will get just a couple of yards before the Beam, main unit come onto the field. There, Warren. Beam was not fooled at all. He sat right there and made the play. So we'll have a punt, and Moore will have to look straight into this sun as he receives this punt inside the 15 or so yard line where he lines up at this moment, 26 to 7 with the clock inside eight minutes. High floating kick. Moore takes it at about the 12. Does a little jigger bug step, goes to his right, falls across the 20 to about the 23 yard line. We'll take a quick timeout and return to Statesboro with a seven and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Back on CSS right after this. By CSS, your source for sports in the southeast. We're in Statesboro, Georgia here late Saturday afternoon as Georgia Southern continues to lead 26-7. And a new quarterback, the Shannon Gamble, in for East Tennessee. Out of the power eye, he keeps, pumps up. Brings it in and gets good yardage. First down and more. Ball's loose on the field, though, after the gamble went down at about the 47. But that ball was live. I don't believe there was any whistle prior to Gamble's going down. David Young and James Young were both near the tackle. They are now going to say his knee was down when he had the big gain up to near the 45-yard line. Well, that's his strength, running the option. He's, a, he's an excellent running quarterback. He did fumble there, but I think East Tennessee recovered it anyway on the sideline. That's a great play by DeShannon. Wow. That uh, was an interesting replay there as well, but to East Tennessee's uh, credit at this point, they are out of any deep coverage there, and it's first and 10 at the 46. Gavin Varner powering his way for a couple of yardage before he's met by five different Georgia Southern defenders. Michael Ward was the first to get there. It's amazing, you know, you get a little positive yardage by a quarterback off the bench, and it gives everybody else just a little bit of spring in their step, and see if maybe just changing the look of things can get East Tennessee uh, going here. Some fresh legs, just a little more quickness. Gamble, a sophomore, basically the same dimensions as Jatavis Sanders. They're both 5'11", right. 190. Taking a big split with that right tackle on guard, trying to create some running space in there. Good play fake as he looks for a pass downfield. He's got a receiver just out of the arms intended for number 31 that's andrew knuckles and that was a well-thrown ball that very nearly was caught at the 15-yard line looks like james young made a last minute dive at that ball warning and just got his hand on it deshaun actually threw a pretty good ball there watch it on the replay here just got his hand on a great play gamble uh, just another one of the low country out of the lower part of South Carolina that Paul Hamilton has had a huge hotbed of recruiting in, and Gamble came out of uh, Stratford High School, just one of the top programs in the state of South Carolina, and he now is out operating out of the shotgun. Here, lobbing one up for Cecil Moore, and that ball was in the arms and out. As good defense played there by number 29, that's Jonathan Wilkerson, and that's the true freshman we told you about who is from Claxton, Georgia, barely 20 miles from Statesboro. He timed this pretty well. That's, a, that's really a good throw by DeSham, and he, the defender, he timed it very well. Got his hand in there at the last minute. Of course, Cecil's really been frustrated today. They just can't get the ball to him. Back to punt now, East Tennessee. That ball kicked at about the 37, very nearly blocked. Anthony Williams calling for a fair catch, and he will do so at the ball marked at about the 23-yard line. 
We'll take another quick break. And when we come back with just 6.02 remaining in the third quarter, you've got Georgia Southern leading East Tennessee State 26-7. Paul Hamilton can only sit and watch and wonder right now if Georgia Southern will march down the field on this defense that's been out there most of the afternoon for East Tennessee. Here we are at first and 10 at the 23 to start this drive with just over six minutes left. There is a flag on the play as Mark Myers kind of dances out of the grab there of the left side for a loss as the East Tennessee defense does come up strong on this possession. I believe that was Lamar Beam again. That was a pretty good hit there. I think we're gonna have a holding penalty. Chop block. Yes, it was a block there called against the Georgia Southern offense. And that will give uh, a little more breathing room for East Tennessee. Let's see if we can see this on this replay here. Chop block That's on it. the offense. That penalty is declined. It's somebody coming from Second the outside out. and blocking a guy below the waist after he's been engaged with another uh, another player. I think it happened away from the ball there, and uh, that shot a little too tight to see, but it did come in very quickly uh, on a block below the waist. And now it's second and 13 at the 20 yard line. Jazz Williams, the sophomore quarterback, pitching it around the left side. That's Jermaine Austin. And look at the little guy. We always talk about the running he does up the middle. How about when he gets outside and gets a little breathing room and he says, hey, let me do out, let me do some of this out here for a while. That's that punk. That's that pony backfield. I would tell you, he, they, they're quick. And they're hard to get a great shot at because they're so low to the ground. Boy, he ran probably eight, nine yards before anybody laid a hand East on him. East Tennessee's lined up in the three-man front there, Warren, and they're walking up their outside linebackers, but they're never set. First and 10 after the run by Myers. Ball loose on the ground. Does East Tennessee get it? Williams also looked like he was trying to wrestle it back and East Tennessee, you know, you never know what's going to happen on the, the bottom of the pile there, but it was very clear that number nine, Mike Cornegay, was the first there to get it and I wasn't sure if he'd be able to keep it once he got there. Junior linebacker from Fayetteville, North Carolina. So East Tennessee's defense doing what it can here in the third quarter to give its offense some opportunity. Paul Hamilton said as he left before halftime that he was going to see just what kind of fire his guys would come out with. They've changed quarterbacks in that last series. And let's see if, yes, Gamble does come back out here in this series as the sophomore sets him down as he's over center from the 44-yard line. The give right up the middle, number 40 with the carry. That is Scott Carter. Let's go downstairs, Jack Douglas. Thanks, Warren. With Deshaun Gamble in the game, Georgia Southern knows that he's pretty strictly an option quarterback, and they're tightening up the defensive linemen, tightening up the end, and they're going for the quarterback. They know he likes to run it, but he can do a little play action. Back up to you, Warren. Very well. Four fumbles to on the day, two of them lost by Georgia Southern, and it's a 26-7 lead right now for the Eagles. Gamble has them over center, second and eight at the 42. Looking down the right side, comes up short, got nothing, nothing, nowhere to go, and he's smothered as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Matt Rio from Waycross, Georgia there to make the initial hit. Georgia Southern strings this thing out, this long line of scrimmage, no place to run. It's all congested in there. Deshaun was going to come back and reverse it all the way back around this end. He, he, yeah, he just, almost made that decision. It got real dark <laughs> is what happened. I mean, there was just no light at all. All blue shirts. So we've got third and nine. We're inside four minutes now. From the shotgun is Gamble. Oh, he's just doing all kind of effort to escape, but Eric McIntyre out of Escaro, Florida, the sophomore nose tackle and Matt Rio also there to greet him. There's just nobody being blocked up front here. They, they just can't establish anything. They had great field position, a chance to get back in the ball game with momentum, and they run three and out. Bass now to punt for the ninth time today. He's been averaging almost 35 yards a punt. The last handful have been uh, fair caught there by Anthony Williams, and 
that's kind of been a plus for them because this guy can do some damage. This one kind of off the side of his foot, but if it gets the right bounce, it still may be okay, and it's going to get to the 10-yard, inside the 10-yard line before it's down, and kind of a fortunate turn of events there for East Tennessee as they will force Georgia Southern to start this drive inside their own 10. For all the latest news and even rumors from the college football world, you can tune in to Talkin' Sports with Danny Sheridan every Sunday night at 8 o'clock Eastern. Danny and his guest host Mike Gottfried are guaranteed to keep you entertained every Sunday for one full hour. You can find that right here on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Little official timeout here as they get some things squared away. I believe one of the officials on that far sideline is trying to get something squared away with East Tennessee's bench. Now they're saying you can start it. I think they want to make sure all everybody's watches were correctly timed. And he's pointing to his wrist watch, and they're saying 2:56 is on the clock. And I believe they're about ready to whistle this back into play. First and ten, ball at the nine. Chaz Williams here, kind of quiet in the third quarter to this point after having a phenomenal first half. The give up the middle and watching break loose as Austin looks like he was stopped after maybe two yards and then he bounced outside and picked up another six. Six. Six compound, uh, compact little fullback in there just bouncing off, no wrapping up, and he's just ducking under people. It's Look at how low he was to the ground. Low it's center <laughs> of gravity. He's got 67 yards, and he's kind of doing at times the, the grunt running. You know what I'm saying? He just kind of gets that hard stuff up the middle every once in a while, an opportunity outside. Second down, short. Williams keeping around the left side. Breaks through. First down, looking for more. To the 35-yard line, finally taking down about the 37. I'm not so sure that's poor tackling as much as his ability by Chaz Williams to make people miss, Warren. I, he, he's awful quick. Tough to get a clean shot. He's got late him. blockers coming around there. He's got a seam to pop up into. He doesn't go down with a little arm tackle. He makes good moves. He's now got 135 yards rushing on the day. And Georgia Southern moving now with the ball at the 36. Up the middle, the dive for a couple, maybe uh, number 31, Brandon Andrews from Swainsboro, Georgia. He's a freshman, and uh, you know, we haven't mentioned that Austin's also a freshman very much today, but uh, they're gonna hear about Austin for a long time here. Six straight 100-yard rushing games. First quarterback to do that in Georgia Southern history, and they've had, oh, by the way, a couple pretty good guys at that position. Minute 25, remaining third quarter. Williams keeps and pays for it there on that side. That was Doesn't a fullback follow the play there, Warren. He didn't work. It didn't work that time. Mike Cornegay there with the stop, and the clock is ticking towards the one-minute mark. Chaz Williams bringing him up to third and eight. 135 yards total on 22 rushes. He also has two short touchdown runs to go with his afternoon's work. And at third and eight from the 38, he pitches to the outside. That's Austin who gets it down, but does not, or does he get it to the, oh, good mark there for a first down. And then a flag well after the play, right in front of the referee. Somebody was caught doing something they shouldn't. And, and it may have been the old payback, got you back, but you don't do it right in front of the referee. First down before we even sort out what happens with the flag. Let's hear what he has to say. After the play was over, personal foul on the offense, personal foul okay. on the defense. Don't need to offset first down. Yep, there were a couple of guys kind of clutching and grabbing there, uh, but it was totally in the view of the referee, and uh, he called it, and it was well after the, the play was over, to be honest with you, as he mentioned. So. The first down, definitely a positive thing for Georgia Southern. That keeps their drive going. And the ball's now marked at about the 47-yard line. Those two guys have been going at it all day. It was away from the ball, but mm -hmm. there was a lot of intensity with the, the play of both of them. Williams with the give up the middle to Austin. He's got five touchdowns this year. I, 
What a terrific situation for a young man who's a freshman. And they've got freshmen too deep at that position right now. Jermaine Austin, a freshman, number six, and Brandon Andrews, a freshman, number 31. Now they come off and out from each other, and sometimes it's even tough to know who's in and who isn't because they're both very effective. Nice crowd here today at uh, Paulson Stadium for this family day gathering. A little over 16,000 today, 16,106 in attendance for this ball game this afternoon, and we're very happy to bring it to you here on Comcast Sports Southeast. There is a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout as well. The Eagles lead 26-7, and we'll be back with more here. You're watching Comcast Sports Southeast, your source for sports. Third quarter by either school, but uh, in the last five years, a number that jumps out at me whenever East Tennessee is, uh, whether, whether Georgia Southern is leading at halftime, they are 46-2 and two when they have a halftime lead. So, I wouldn't say they feel like, oh, we got this one squared away, but the odds would certainly indicate we're going to crank this one up here for our final quarter of action at midfield. Second and six, ball squarely on the 50-yard line. Chaz Williams trying to lead his team to its sixth consecutive win. Williams on the outside pitches to Austin. Austin with five, six, maybe seven-yard line, maybe seven-yard gain before he finally is down. He's, he's so low to the ground. East Tennessee, yeah, just, yeah Warren, they, they're trying to. They try, East Tennessee is trying to stop the pitch with the tackle, the outside tackle on a five technique, right there. He's playing on the outside shoulder of the tackle number 46. He just can't get there. Excellent job by Austin there. Uh, Montreal Hartley eventually getting the uh, tackle along with help from Andrew Forrester. Third and one, ball at the 45, a fake inside. Williams does keep it and is close to converting the first down. Boy, what a uh, future here and a present for that matter for Chaz Williams. I just, uh, this is the second or third time I think I've seen him play this year. And boy, does he just seem to get better. It's an awful young football team and they're doing very well total yards today. I want to show you a graphic quickly as we go to this next play. Georgia Southern, 342 yards rushing, 43 for East Tennessee. First and 10 at the 42. Little counter step. Interesting. Little short side of the field give to Brandon Andrews who takes it down and is close to another first down though he picks up maybe seven yards or so in the process. Lamar Beam with the stop. Actually, this is pretty well defended, but he popped up in that seam so quick. And their quickness right here between the seams right here, East Tennessee just doesn't seem quick enough to close the gap on those pitches in that seam. Boy, look at the little guy carry two full tackles on his back there. Second and two, Williams keeping, trying to get room outside. He's at the 30 and then knocked out of bounds at about the 29. Watch his moves here. He comes in, he ducks, dips it inside, takes it back out to the corner, and his speed gives him a chance to get outside and make positive yardage. And he's smart enough to know, I'm not going to take a hit in the sidelines. There's no place to go. I'm getting out of here. First down, and now we're at the 29. So they're marching again here uh, after not having any success scoring in the third quarter. Definitely looking for an opportunity here inside the 30 in their first possession of the fourth quarter. Georgia Southern is looking for a timeout right now, and they're going to get that. And uh, we've got 13-18 remaining in this game. Georgia Southern leading 26-7 over East Tennessee State. We'll take a quick break and come back with more right after this. Georgia Allen Paulson Stadium. And Warren Pepper, Walt Madzak, and Jack Douglas happy to be along here with you this Saturday afternoon for this game between Georgia Southern and and East Tennessee. First and 10, Georgia Southern, Williams to the outside, giving it to Mark Myers. He's to the 20, the 15, 10, and it's a touchdown. Georgia Southern, as Mark Myers takes it 29 yards, tight roping his way down that near sideline into the end zone. What I'm amazed here is how the Georgia Southern tackles get out to block on the perimeter. Uh, you just watch this block out here by the tackle. 
But you couldn't see his number, but I'll tell you what, he made a great play and created that seam. Myers with the balancing act, keeping himself inbounds for the final 10 or so yards of that run. A 29-yard run, and the point after now by Scott Shelton is up and good, and immediately Georgia Southern breaks out to a 33-7 lead after having no success scoring in the entire third quarter. Here's another look at that run. Watch him tiptoe down the sideline here, and the official's right behind him. He's watching every step, and he did not step on the chalk. He just tiptoed down there. Look, look how close he is. That's great body control. <laughs> he had the old lean going there in the last five yeah. or six yards, managed to keep himself in bounds, and scores standing up. Myers with 11 plays uh, culminating in that drive. 90-yard drive they had uh, involving four minutes and 45 seconds, and then the 29-yard touchdown run by Myers, who himself now has 74 yards rushing on the afternoon. It's a great effort. Those small backs, uh, they, they might be small in stature, but they're, they're high, high level and big in talent. There's the pride of Powder Springs, Georgia, there as he gets into the end zone and then gives a little thanks as the sun is just about gone down here and set on this Saturday afternoon. And the shadows have definitely, you know, enveloped the entire stadium. And the, the first really cool part of the season we've had the entire fall. And uh, folks who brought sweaters are still here. <laughs> and, and those who, who didn't follow Mama's advice, uh, they may have uh, decided to go get some hot chocolate at this point because all of a sudden it's a little nippy in Paulson Stadium. We may see another quarterback uh, the next time Georgia Southern takes the field. Uh, they've got Trey Hunter warming up. Knuckles, meanwhile, looking for a seam, breaks up to the 30-yard line on that kickoff return, and that's where East Tennessee will begin. Knuckles is the leading ground gainer for, for East Tennessee today on those kickoff returns. Dave Robinson there on the stop along with A.J. Bryant. And East Tennessee is going to come out for quarterback here, Warren. Well, we saw uh, mostly gamble during the third quarter as Sanders was told to sit, and it'll be Gamble who comes out in the fourth quarter. Yeah. So, the sophomore from the Charleston, South Carolina area, played at Stratford High School there, with the fake to the middle, and then Varner on the outside is hit by three different Eagles and brought down for about a one-yard loss. Joe Scott led that charge for the stop in his backfield. He got a little help there from Derek Butler. It isn't too dissimilar than the philosophy of Georgia Southern's uh, option, but there's no misdirection at all, and it's just not uh, executed as well because Georgia Southern, they see this every day in practice, and they're flowing to the ball, and, and they have no reason to... The only way East Tennessee's going to score now is get outside or throw the ball. They're not going to run up the middle. Gamble, the sophomore now, getting a chance here for the most part of this second half to see if he can move these... Uh, guys on offense, this time he's rolling to his left. Little floater that goes way over the head of the intended receiver. That was for 23, Kareem Coffin, and had no shot at that pass. It falls incomplete, way out of bounds. Georgia Southern comes into the game, averaging 34 points a game. They've got 33 on the board right now. You know, Warren, East Tennessee didn't score an offensive touchdown last week, and they haven't scored one nope. today. That, that's serious trouble for that offense and I feel for Paul and his staff I know they're working hard at it and the players want to get it done but it's just not happening we'll look at this uh, from a defensive standpoint 13 tackles for loss today 47 yards six sacks as well for a loss of 34 a deep drop and a look to the left he wants to throw he just can't find anybody and now it's intercepted that's David Young Oh, is he going to take it all the way back? He's got running room. He's picking his way. Watch him look like a running back with the ball, trying to find blockers, and he finally gets inside the 15-yard line. The defense of Georgia Southern having its say today. There was nobody open here. It looked like he had room to run initially, and then the defense closed in, and he, he threw into traffic over there. There's double coverage. A lot of people in the area. It's a tough throw going to his left, thrown across his body. He was looking for Cecil Moore as well. New quarterback into the game as we continue to watch that return. And a terrific job there 
by the defense of Georgia Southern, and we have a new quarterback for Georgia Southern now, Trey Hunter, a sophomore out of Guyton, Georgia. He's 5'10", 181, not the size or bulk. The give is to Jermaine Austin. He tries to find running room, but has very little success. If we've seen the last of Williams for the day, and I'm not sure that we have, but given that they have brought in another quarterback at the moment, let me just give you some of his numbers, and they include 142 yards rushing, a couple of touchdowns on 24 attempts today. And uh, we'll see how Hunter does now in the remaining 11 and a half minutes of this ball game. Operating under center, the give there to Brandon Andrews. And Andrews gets back, may, he may have gotten a little over a yard or so. I think they let him run two plays where he didn't have to run the ball. They were handoffs there, and I think now he'll come out and run the option. His okay. passing numbers, Warren, are a little better than, than Chaz. Uh, he hasn't played as much, but his completion rates are a little better. So the question is, do we throw here on third and nine, or do we, do we, do we run our bread and butter? Well, they have an 80% success rate inside the 20 this year. They get a touchdown or field goal 80% of the time. The pitch out, number 31, Brandon Andrews working his way down, and he has first down yardage, and inside the five-yard line, looks like it may be marked close to the three. Well, I thought they did. They let him get his feet wet, get a feel for the ball game, and then, and then come out and run the option. Here's the pitch to Andrews. A little bit of a high pitch there, but but good hands and uh, and great play in by the receiver, by the trail back. Yeah, he really did look the ball in all the way. Just one back in the backfield now, and that's Andrews again as they operate from the three. This time Hunter keeps, tries to keep his feet, and does get a little positive yardage there before his knee touched the ground at about the two. Surri surprised they ran that counter option down there. They usually run follow the fullback in, and I think that's what you'll see Trey Hunter do right now in the next play out. Yeah, that might have been Hunter's chance to score. <laughs> I think he'd go to the bank if he's going to follow the fullback in the end zone. Yeah, let him keep it maybe the next time? I or give it to not. Andrews? I, I think he'll keep it. I think he just follows fullback. They're creating some good seams with that offensive line. We're inside 10 minutes now. Second and two. Second and goal. Ball at the two. And we'll see if Trey Hunter, who in his first appearance this afternoon, coming off the bench now as Chaz Williams is given a breather, can get him in the end zone. There's Andrews, a big pile up at about the one yard line, and now they say he does muscle his way in. Touchdown, Georgia Southern, as Brandon Andrews, the freshman from Swainsboro, Georgia, and now a late flag, as there may be a little clutching and grabbing and conversation going on there on the field in what has been a long afternoon for those guys in the trenches. Uh, that's a little frustration down there. I think that's the coach's decision not to let Trey Hunter score first and get to the fullback, let him get one. Well, Andrews has certainly worked in the shadows of Austin most of the afternoon. But those two freshman fullbacks, uh, they're just not the classic hulking, bulking fullback that you often see. Uh, these guys can scoot as well as run the power game. They hide behind those defense, uh, offensive linemen. Here is the touchdown, even though there was a penalty after that was It's just one-on-one -on -one blocking down there, and he finds a seam. You see him reach that ball out right. over the line. You, you talked about it earlier. Uh -huh. That's dangerous. I, I don't understand why that ball isn't fumbled more often. This is a pretty long point after here. This ball is going to be about a 35-yard attempt because of that penalty, and it looks like it's hooking a little bit, but it does get inside that left upright, and that is good for yet another point and a 40-7 to seven lead for Georgia Southern. We will continue with more here as the clock now inside nine and a half minutes, and we'll be back with more in just a moment. Pretty seen there. I don't care what side of the field you're looking at. There's your uh, little picture-perfect postcard of Statesboro, Georgia on a late Saturday afternoon as Georgia Southern has a 40 to 7 lead now over East Tennessee and East Tennessee's only points on the board courtesy of its defense in the second quarter. So we're set for this kickoff after that run by Brandon Andrews to put them on the board with 40 points for the day. And we'll see if East Tennessee can still figure out a way to muster a scoring opportunity before this game's end. 
folks have begun to leave a bit here, and I think, if you want to be honest, they're anxious to get home and see Georgia take on Florida here in another game of considerable interest to folks that live in this part of the country. Or join the world's largest outdoor cocktail party one or the other. Well, I think there's some of that going on here already. All right, this ball by Knuckles received at about the 12. Here he is to the line at about the 25 to the 30. And it knocked out of bounds with a hard, late lick by number 35, the Robinson, D. Robinson, with that hit that was immediately called because it did appear Knuckles had already. I don't know if uh, Robinson felt like he just couldn't hold back, but you'll see that again in an opportunity here. A personal foul called on that late hit by Robinson. Got to give Knuckles a lot of credit. He's a tough kid. He's returned a lot of those kickoffs today, and he really is, is taking a pounding. There you go. He was a good yard or, or more Knuckles out of bounds. Personal foul on the kicking team. 15-yard penalty. First down. So, Knuckles, the junior out of Tunnel Hill, Georgia, kind of earning his scholarship this afternoon. And here comes the East Tennessee State offense with DeShannon Gamble again at quarterback. He's been pretty much at controls here in the second half as Paul Hamilton's trying to do what he can do to get this offense on track. Varner with the give right up the middle. Good first down yardage as he spikes his way to the 40-yard line. That's the most positive yards on a running play all day, Warren. Cecil Moore must be frustrated. Last year, he caught two touchdown passes in the upset of Georgia Southern up in the Dome in East Tennessee, and he just hasn't been able to get the ball today. Tariq Muhammad with the stop there. Nine minutes now remaining in the game. Full house here, a little eye backfield here. Gamble under center. And to give to Spearman, who doesn't get much initially, but does keep the legs turning. And Georgia Southern saying they've got the football. We could not see the ball pop out, but James Burchett was there uh, to de make the, and the referees are the guys that count. And they have indicated there's a change of possession at all. So it'll be East Tennessee's ball. And this is the best and biggest penetration maybe they've had in some time here. They're now inside the 40 yard line. Now, offensively on their own on their own effort, this is probably their deepest penetration today. Second and seven, ball at the 38. Gamble to Varner. Not much going, but he does keep fighting for a couple as Victor Cabral of Naples, Florida there to deliver the tackle. And also getting a little bit of help there from Matt Rio. Not a lot of movement off the line of scrimmage there. They're not, not pushing George Southern back enough to, to create uh, many seams in there. East Tennessee came into this game. Uh, they've only been averaging about 15 points a game as it was, and this is not that un uh, inconsistent, I guess I should say, uh, with what they've been doing offensively lately. And their defense has been the one that's kind of kept them in the games that they've been able to have success in. To Shannon Gamble, at quarterback, starts in the shotgun, then moves up under center, and then decides just to tuck it and keep. Third down and six. He's going to be well short of that. Matt Rio there, the first with the hit. Georgia Southern was making some late defensive changes there. And East Tennessee, Gamble just waited for him to do it. Mm -hmm. Instead of taking a quick snap and catching him in transition defensively, Fourth down at this point. I would guess they may even just continue to, to go for it at this point. Oh, they got fourth and five at the 36. Uh, they are the worst field goal kicking team in the conference. It's been an adventure. Yes. And it's interesting to me, you know, they play a number of their games in the dome. So uh, that would be kind of a sterile environment from a field goal uh, kicking standpoint. Right. No wind, no long grass. Right. No, no mud, no... no. East Tennessee is going to call a timeout right now, and we're going to take a timeout as well, folks. We've got just a little under seven minutes remaining in the ballgame, and we'll be back in just a bit. It's been a blue sky kind of day here. Shadows now just enveloping the entire stadium, and a beautiful, beautiful fall, November, late afternoon in Statesboro, Georgia. It's fourth and five for East Tennessee, and... They are going to go for it here, and why not? As the Shannon Camp Gamble gets them back out here after the timeout, and they basically need to know now that once they're given the go-ahead, they can continue. We've got 6.46 remaining. 
And Georgia Southern on his way to its sixth consecutive win after kind of stumbling out of the gate this year and losing two of their first three games. But they've certainly seemed to find it now, and they should be a team that really is um, a problem for others as we head towards the end of the season and the NCAA Division I uh, AA playoffs. I'd, I'd sort of like to see them from a couple little curls here get this first down. Right. I think that's the thing they have to do. They can't go deep. They just don't have time. Have we told, uh, has the guy on the field with the red cap been I, I told think, that uh, it's time to play? I, I think he <laughs> fell asleep out there with that red cap on. You know, I, you know what? I think he was listening to another game for a second. I'm not sure. <laughs> he forgot daylight savings time. Yeah. It's over. All right. All right. I know the deal. The guy's paid by the hour. All right. Let's well, move on here. <laughs> Uh, it's still fourth and five. All right, fourth and five from the 36. Let's see if Gamble can pick up this first down and keep this drive going. A little floated pass. Oh, wow, that ball was out there. It looked like it might be brought in by Michael Rader, but he felt a little pressure on the, his back there as Deion Stokes had him just off his shoulder, and that ball falls incomplete, and East Tennessee surrenders possession. Georgia Southern will take over with 6.41. They had the right play called. Uh -huh. uh, it just, I don't know if it, it's hard to tell if the ball was tipped or, or could have been caught. Trey Hunter back in, a new center as well. Will Lord, a freshman from Tennille, Georgia, will be uh, handling the snaps here as Coach Mike Seawalk able to get a lot of players in with some time here late this afternoon. 6.41. Ball starting at the 36. Here comes Hunter. Little little jigger bug step there yeah i like that little uh i like that little two-step there he did and montreal hartley finally came up hartley's had a pretty tough afternoon as he's come up from his free safety a couple of times to make plays today this is just a quarterback sweep here he, there, he has no intention of pitching that ball he's running it all the way he's got people out in front of him no pitch man behind him it's interesting georgia southern the only person with dirty white trousers on out there is a left guard the entire offensive line has clean Clean football trousers on, so right. I think that's a whole the equipment new manager will appreciate that yeah. when it's Soft. time for uh, right. socks and others. Here we go, uh, six minutes even at the 42, second and four. Hunter keeping, not quite maybe to the first down. He does fall over the 35 to the third, maybe 46, maybe over the 45 to the 46 yard line. Lamar Beam, we certainly called his name once or twice this afternoon, as Hunter getting some play now for most of this fourth quarter. Continues to try to move these Eagles into another scoring opportunity. We're probably going to see the fullback here again and, and make this first down, keep that clock running. And Third and short. Give these youngsters a chance to play one. Georgia Southern today, 7 of 13 in third down conversions. We're going to make that 8 for 14 because they just got another one. First down with the clock just a little more than five minutes remaining in this game from Statesboro, Georgia, this Saturday afternoon. Georgia Southern still will have to kind of keep an eye on a couple of other teams in the conference here as we head down the final three weeks of the season because you've still got Wofford and Furman, each with just one loss. And uh, that certainly could mitigate things when it gets to the end of the year as regards the conference championship. First and 10 now. From the 47-yard line, we're inside five minutes. Big hole there as kind of walking his way through is number 48, Larry Long, who does get good yardage there as Long gets some playing opportunity there and from the fullback spot, the freshman out of Smyrna, Georgia. His offensive linemen are fresh, too, and they're anxious to play, and they don't get to play that often in tight ball games, so they're really enjoying this, and they're, they're working hard at it and making good blocks. Six-yard gain, second and four. Hunter, really no place to go. Does try to dive forward, though, and find something positive out of maybe a yard and a half or so when he just couldn't find anybody to pitch it to. Jeff Pierce there, the senior for East Tennessee with the stop. I don't think you'll see Mike uh, see what Coach Seawack put the ball up now. He's going to keep it on the ground, I believe, and give these guys some work. Clock continuing to tick. Eagles well in hand here, 40 to seven. 418 yards rushing today, and they've held East Tennessee to 57. Hunter almost stopped in his backfield, but then worked his way out of the uh, 
grasp and worked his way over the first down, stopped by Jeff Pearson, Andrew Forster. Our Shoney's player of the game today, Chaz Williams, 142 yards, and about half of that was on this play in the first half as he kept it outside and went 71 yards from the keep around the left side, and he was even kind of easing up there towards the end as he got it into the end zone there as Chaz Williams is our Shoney's player of the game. First and 10 at the 41. Hunter to his right side. He's going to keep it and find running room maybe to the line of scrimmage and not little else. That's quarterback sweep all the way again. Nothing else but a, but a pure old-fashioned power sweep for the quarterback keeping the ball. Matt Palmer, a junior for East Tennessee, with the stop. And the clock continues to run, headed for the three-minute mark. I don't, I don't think Mike Suak, I know him, I, I know him well, and I, he, I know he doesn't want to rub it in, but he's going to let these guys run the ball to the best of their ability, but I don't yeah. think you'll see him throwing and They're it. running right, they're running left. There's yeah. nothing really fancy here. It's just uh, pretty basic, keep it on the ground, let's get this thing over and go have a cup of hot chocolate. A little movement there as some <laughs> of the guys uh, who haven't had a chance to play come in and a little out of sync maybe, and um, that's going to happen when you get... Uh, some of the guys who aren't uh, the normal starters up in some of those positions. And the offensive line, the only time they get their names called when they mess up anyway, right? So <laughs> That's the only line with dirty trousers, so he's yeah. been in there a while. <laughs> well, he's the number two guy. I'm, I'm trying to give his mom a little, make sure his mama doesn't get mad at me. So I'm not going to call his name. He just a little false start there, and we'll go second and 15 from the 46. Oh, ball's on the ground there by Hunter. He picks it up and shakes his way free but then pays for it when he eventually runs in to number 56 for East Tennessee, a huge man in the name of Jeff Pierce as he comes up to make that stop. We're approaching the two-minute mark now as uh, this has kind of been the predictable uh, mode of operation for the offense the last maybe five minutes, and you make a point. Mike Suwak there not uh, seeking by any means to do any more damage than's already been done. The point's been made. 40 to 7 the score and we're inside two minutes and he's got his most of the backups on the field right now for the east uh, for the georgia southern offense hunter keeping picking his way finds a hole gets it down across the uh, 40 maybe to the 37 yard line well he's got the punt team gathered on the sidelines but now that the ball's inside the east tennessee 40 he just may uh, go for it and uh, and keep it on the ground and if they score fine but otherwise they'll run the clock mm -hmm. One minute, 25 seconds remaining here from Paulson Stadium. I think that's what he's going to do. He's going to run the football. Keep it in bounds, not go out of bounds. This was a 9-7 game, early second quarter. And uh, we're sitting here looking at each other and saying, well, maybe, good gracious, East Tennessee is just going to figure out a way to hang in this thing. And then it's been all Georgia Southern since. Little swing pass to the outside. And that's complete to Lewis Barr, but it's not enough for a first down. And that's going to present a little change over here. And so the guys from the offense of Georgia Southern come off, and East Tennessee will get another crack here at things with 59 seconds on the clock. Nothing like making us look bad saying he's not going to throw the football. Well, <laughs> but it was a safe pass. It you were told by somebody <laughs> when you got into this business not to second-guess the coaches, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Paul McGuire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me pass along some Southern Conference finals this afternoon, folks. Western Carolina, 35-23, as East Tennessee is attempting to move the ball here in the final few seconds. App State comes back and wins in their game, and Wofford beats Citadel 27-14. The App State-Chattanooga game close throughout before App State pulls it out. So those conference finals for you this afternoon. Happy to pass those along to you here on CSS. The clock continues to run, 37, 36 seconds, and there may be um, one or two more plays here at most as East Tennessee State now not only loses the game today, but also loses the opportunity to have a winning season. They needed to win their final three to have their fourth consecutive winning season. And this young team of Paul Hamilton is going to have to figure out a way to get things squared away for their final two games because they still have Wofford, nationally ranked, and Chattanooga. That'll do it as the clock ticks off the final second. Georgia Southern winning its sixth 
straight game. Final score is 40 to 7, and they continue to sit atop the Southern Conference standings. A little over 16,000 here this afternoon, and we appreciate you watching along with us. We will take a quick break and come back and put one final little uh, statement on it. That'll do it. We'll be back in just a moment. Let's hear from the coach of the winning Georgia Southern Eagles as Jack yeah. Douglas is standing by. Jack? <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. I'm down here with Coach Mike Seawalk, the winning coach, Georgia Southern's head coach. Coach, you overcame some... Uh, some turnovers, some momentum shifts. We, we overturned and, and a lot of infliction on ourselves. We didn't do a very good job of executing all the time, but I was rather impressed with it again. I thought our defensive effort out here was absolutely fantastic. And, you know, I always said before, we're going to ride our defense, and our defense rose to the occasion this time. And I was really impressed with our defense offensively. Uh, too many mistakes, five major turnovers for five major busts in that first half. It was just disappointing. And then coming out in the second half, too, just we fell down a couple of times. That's um, unlike us. We have to do a lot better uh, if we're going to go ahead and amount, amount to anything this year. Now, next week, tough game against Furman University in Greenville. How do you prepare your team for that? Well, uh, Furman's always tough. I mean, they're a good football team, and they're going to be up there. They uh, have played a great season. They got a, they got an off week, so we got to expect anything. I mean, I'd like to have had the off week, but that's just that's the way the cards are dealt to us. Uh, we got to go out there, have a great week of practice, prepare, and just be sharp and make sure we take care of the football. If we take care of the football, I think it ought to be a, a pretty good football game. I think you got two good defenses, and I'd like to see us. Um, I'd like to see us step it up one more time. I'd like to see us do a better job this week and improve on all our mistakes today and go out there and have a, a mistake-free, error-free football game. <laughs> all right. Well, good luck next week, Coach. Thank you, Jack. Uh, right. Thank you. Back up to you, War. All right, thanks, Jack. So there's your final score, folks, 40-7. to 7. Georgia Southern with the easy win there after blowing it out in the second quarter to go to their sixth consecutive win. Thanks for watching. For Walt Nadzak and Jack Douglas, I'm Warren Pepper. You've been watching CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Good night, everybody. <laughs>